Hello, welcome to Professor 3 Mac. Today I'm going to show you how to apply multiple cyclic loadings in Abacus CAE on any FE model. Uh, we, I have created two scenarios which are again motivated from a question which was asked by one of the subscribers. So in the first case, what we're going to do, we're going to do a simulation where we will apply two simultaneous cyclic loads, while in the second case, we will apply two sequential cyclic loads one after the other. How it looks like uh, is in terms of pictures with something like this that we will have if you plot force and displacements as a function of time so we call this as time and at the same time we will apply first a force which is it could be any arbitrary cyclic load for certain time let's say one second in this case and we will also apply at the same time some displacement boundary condition which is also cyclic in nature and this way we will do that ignore my writing because i'm using my mouse to write this through in the second case which is two sequential cyclic loads we will apply cyclic load in sequentially so firstly we will start with a force control test and we will apply a cyclic load for one second and as soon as this will finish we will stop the force or remove the force boundary conditions or loading and we will apply a displacement boundary condition which will again be any arbitrary cyclic loading for another one second this means the total time will be two seconds so i hope you will be interested in this and you'll learn something from it Again, this way you can also apply multiple cyclic loading as well, whether it's simultaneous or sequential. So, see you on the other side in Abacus CAE. Okay, let's go ahead with the first example simultaneous cyclic loads. And I will start with creating a part first. So, I'll call it part one extrusion. I will keep everything 3D. You can, I can try 2D as well, but. It doesn't make any difference so let's start with zero zero i'll make a cube of let's say one by one or let's say ten by ten so this is this and then press continue and then we will give another depth of ten so we have a dimension of the cube is ten by ten by ten now we're going to fix it from one side any arbitrary side maybe we will apply this force boundary conditions which is which are cyclic in nature on this side and we will apply this person boundary condition on this i'm not going to run the simulation i will just show you how you can do it second step in all these abacus a modeling approach is we need to create a material model so we will say create material one let's assume we are doing static analysis so we don't need to define density but we will keep everything elastic so we will go elastic and now we have to define Young's modeler so let's to use some properties of a steel 210 gigapascals 0.33 as Poisson's ratio if you want to define plasticity you can define it through this again there are so many videos on the channel on plasticity and also for damage models okay press ok now we will associate this material with this part so we will create a section first select the material with that section and now we will assign this section to the part and now abacus knows that this is the part which is part one and it has been assigned the material which is material number one next is assembly and we will bring all the parts to assembly in this case we only have one so we will press instance part select the part and then press ok and you will see we have a part here now we go to the step module where we will tell abacus what type, sort of analysis we're going to do so in this case we're going to create a general step you can also use explicit but as i said before for a static step you will be needing density because there is inertia involved there so i will keep the i will turn the you know, non-linear geometric options on in the, those in this case it doesn't matter but i mean for large different geometrical deformation it's easier to do that i will say maximum number of increments to be 10,000 because if it reaches 200 then it will stop so to avoid that thing i'm just running that and i will say okay start with a smaller time increment but then the maximum could be 0.1 but in this case it depends on the time increment we're going to use 
so let's say we define it as 0 0.001 01 and we keep this as a small point so that we capture the maximum number of points on the uh, force time or displacement time cycle 0 01 so again if you are not familiar with how to apply cyclic loading on a basic model then there is a video on that in our channel so please have a look at that so again the selection of this will depend on how many points you want to capture in that cyclic curve and you want to ensure that you capture as many points as possible on this so this is done here now we go to the next one and where we will apply the load and this is the point where we will be considering how to define the thing so in this case we're going to do the simultaneous loading so let's apply a force first so we will apply a force concentrated force let's call this and let's say we apply this on these nodes difficult to see but when it becomes red it means selected and then we apply displacement force of in y direction let's call it 10 newtons or whatever if this is in millimeter then this should be in newtons and all the other units should be in newton per millimeter square you can apply as ramp or you can apply as cyclic loading in this case we're going to go with a tabular option you can apply sinusoidal periodic etc again you can look at abacus supplementation or again there are videos on our channel on this so let me try to define a triangular function where it goes from zero to maximum and then comes back to zero then goes to negative then goes back to zero in one second so let's say at zero our force is zero at 0 0.25 which is one fourth force is maximum then at 0 0.5 it becomes zero then 0.75 it becomes minus 1 which is compression side and then 1 it becomes again 0 so you can see it's a kind of a triangle function which goes from 0 to a maximum then comes back to 0 then goes to negative and then goes back to 0 again so this is for for the to total time here so we do it like this and we will select that amplitude here and you see our force is applied as a cyclic function now we have to also fix this from one side so let's fix from this side everything so we can say again everything depends on your boundary condition i'm just showing you that other things are not caring about how i'm going to fix so i'm going to fix everything in this direction in in display on this plane in all directions all three directions now i will apply displacement boundary coordination which is also cyclic on this space so displacements will select displacement i will select this edge all this surface and we can bring it on this side here yeah. and then i will apply a displacement in, in the x direction so i will pull in this direction and then push as well so u1 I give a value of let's say one millimeters and again i will define a time that tabular form which should be from zero now we will apply a displacement boundary condition so let's start with zero as well then at 0 0.25 sorry, 5 it should become one and then maybe 0 0.5 it becomes zero then 0.75 i'm using the same triangular function but you can use any arbitrary function here and it should work let one should be zero and since these you see these these are the spacing so we try to capture as many points between these transitions so from this to this this to this and if you remember i have defined 0.01 as a maximum time increment so it is below this one so it can be we should be able to capture that now in this case we are applying amplitude 2 because amplitude 1 and 2 can be different in this case we are using the same so now we have a displacement which is also acting there that's it you need to just mash it and run it and both the things will be applied simultaneously okay now if you want to do the same for for incremental one or sequential one then what you can do you can still keep this thing as the same 
So you have amplitude function as this. And then what you can do is you can, once it is reached to zero, then we can basically up change the amplitude function for this one. And what we can do here is we keep, we go here. Well, we can do this this way that uh, you can create another step and where there is no force while you will have displacement applied there in a sequential manner or you can do it in the same step so in this case i'm trying to do it in the same step so i'll go to the amplitude manager and i will edit the manager and i will say okay um zero to zero it is zero and then i will add another line here Oops, sorry this okay that's fine so i will say until one it is zero because i don't want any displacement there and then at 1.25 it can be one so now what will happen as you see for the initial time increment from zero to one the displacement has no value but in this case what can happen is your displacement is fixed but after that you will have this thing there as well so this is one way of doing it as well now you see, I mean, your time is, okay, this has to be 1.5 then. Then this should be 1.75. And this should be 2. Only then it's going to work. So now it's applied, but the only limitation here, as you see, is your displacement is fixed. So that may cause some problems. So what else you can do is, uh, instead of defining this like this, you can just delete the displacement for the time being. And force is fine for the first step you go to the step and you create another step and you will call it a step two and it's the same step as before and again we will use a similar sort of approach as we did it for the previous step more elements more increments start with a smaller increment and maybe 0.01 depending on the time period of the wave and how many points you want to capture you have to select the maximum time increment size and now you will see Okay, sorry, this should be one zero point zero zero one. Should now be there. Now to we have force which is propagated. You can also make it deactivated. So this means after the second for the second step, your force is completely inactive, and then you can go to your displacement boundary condition. This is the fixed one. And that goes throughout your analysis while you have to create another one here. So in this case, what you can do is you can basically select the surface as before and apply a boundary condition, let's say one millimeters, and then you can select amplitude two and press OK. Now what is so you see this is still in this in this first step, so you need to move it right, and now it will be in the second step. Now you have to go and check. The amplitude function because you remember we modified it before you have to make sure that amplitude 2 starts from 0 to 0 to 0 and then 0.25 it should be 1 and well you can keep this way as well so i can cancel it for example so there are two ways around it if i have changed it so you see 1.25 onwards starts to go up and then down like electroding so if you select here total time of the simulation then step one was one second so when it comes to 1.1 1.2 then your your displacement will be activated you just need to select this and now it should work so now your everything in this displacement which is amplitude 2 is associated with this amplitude 2 which is total time or if you don't want to change this then you can change it to step time but then you have to change it to the same as what you did for the previous amplitude function so it should become 0 0.25 and that should be 1 then 0 0.5 and then it should be 0 and 0 0.75 then it should be minus 1 then 1.0 and it should be back to 0 and then you can delete the rest of the rows which are not needed here And so now your your is based on the step time, which is the step two time. If you change it to total time, then it will take the total time from the initial until this point. So I have showed you both ways. 
or you can do it sequentially and then if you have multiple loads you can have more steps and in this case you can see it's more flexible because your force which is not not this one but the force which was required to be removed as per the question from the subscriber and you can see it's inactive so you you run it for one second and your amplitude is active your force is active and then it becomes inactive for the step two when step two starts then it basically goes and sees that okay there is a displacement boundary condition with amplitude two which follows this path so i hope this makes sense if you have any questions then please get back to me and i will try my best to answer these questions thank you and see you next time in the next interesting video bye